nightclubs and marketing people in Las Vegas, they don't know these these DJs. They don't know AM. They don't know Mark Ronson. So you're kind of, I mean, at the time, remember it evolved to them calling us mashup DJs? Yeah. When we were just club DJs. Yeah. Well, that was, mashup is a, yeah, a kind of amorphous word that means a lot of different things. Right. right? Like, you know, yeah, that was the era of, well, AM, of course, pushed the agenda in terms of bringing every genre together. And that became the standard, you know, like he set the standard very high and then everyone followed. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, hip hop DJs, mashup DJs, as opposed to house DJs, because back then the house was in the small room and hip hop was in the big room. Now it's back to that. I, I don't. I don't know where we're at in that cycle now. The <laughs> yeah, cycle it's is kind of confusing right now. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like the cycle goes. But in the beginning, in in the early those o- early O three days, house with D- Dead Mouse was in the back room and like with like a hundred people, <laughs> and Eddie McDonald was in the main room or whoever or Neva or you or whoever it was playing to the main crowd and the house was a small thing and then somewhere you know and I, I always feel like it somehow coincided with the passing away of DJ AM mm-hmm. because when he mm-hmm. passed away is exactly when EDM, just EDM, just EDM took up. off yeah and without AM to kind of lead the way for the other side there was no one stopping these European guys just coming from, in. from claiming to be the big well, they were big I mean they were because their producers are not just DJs, you know, the people that make <coughs> records that everyone knows. And so it's like, that's the reason that they got so big mm-hmm. and so forth. But um, I yeah. would say we would all agree with that theory. I'm like sure. everybody yeah, in this room. Yeah. yeah. When AM passed and he was really the guy who was um, pushing the craft of DJing. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say he was pushing EDM music or anything. Because at a certain point, he was playing Daft Punk. I mean, no, he, he a, played all that. He, he played, played a lot of all of that. But he he did it like with some hip hop sense to it. He yes. did it with yeah. the yes. the old not the old school, but he did it with the traditional hip hop craft of DJing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. And, and not what we see EDM DJs. Not all EDM DJs, but most EDM DJs don't DJ. They don't DJ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's crazy. Like that year he passed, uh, he did EDC. He was at EDC. He yeah. performed at yeah. EDC, and it was like mad hip hop ish, and it's not even like. It was not EDM. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he was he was still dropping. Uh, what do he you call was, it? He was playing Metallica around the world and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. He was playing yeah. a bunch of crazy. Shit. He was playing. Um, what do you call it? Today is gonna be yeah. the day. He was Oasis. still. Yeah. He was yeah. still playing Oasis. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. them, he was doing that that legendary set that mm-hmm. he does. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and so that so you know, I mean, what I, what I like to say when I reflect on all those years is I was lucky. I lived through two golden eras: the golden era of hip hop which is close to my heart, and the golden era of EDM, which is not necessarily close to my heart, but I did see a lot of shit. I did get to see, uh-huh. you know, at that point I was ended up working with The Win pretty much. After I did the booking DJs for a while, I ended up basically becoming that role at The Win. So I was working with The Win Nightlife from about 2009 to 2014 or so, and 14, 15. And Crazy. But that was during the EDM explosion. But mm-hmm. We, we got to mm-hmm. go back a little bit to AM and Mark Ronson. Okay. Now, when we were DJing, DJs were getting a certain amount of money. And I don't know if it attributes to you and what you were doing to negotiate the deals. But Shecky was negotiating and somehow making these million dollar mother deals for DJs yeah. that no one ever heard of. I remember when AM's... First signed a first $1 million dollar contract or a multi-million dollar contract with Pure. Yeah. with Pure. Yeah. And he would be off to the side saying like, yeah, yeah we got some, we got some, we got some cooking. What was that? We got 2006? Some was that 2006? When that, when uh, seven, AM's first? Seven, maybe? Six no, no. seven? No, no. It was, it was, Four? it was earlier. It was like five or six. Yeah. Five or six. Yeah. Um, yeah, the biggest, the biggest, AM was leading the way creatively. He was also leading the way in the terms of business because he, was very good at recognizing his own self-worth. That was the lesson of, of many lessons I learned from him. It was know what you are worth and stand up for it. Like he was like starting to get more and more popular. And first he was getting 1,500 out here. Then he was getting 2,500 out here. Then he was getting 5,000 out here. And it kept going up and up. And then he made that big move to Pure. And there was a story which I've told before, which involves basically me sitting down with Stevie D, who was the head of Pure at that time, um, and 
throwing. I mean, we had discussed. You know, a, I wasn't. I was AM's Vegas friend and like Vegas agent. You could say I wasn't really his manager, but <coughs> I sometimes played that role a little bit. And I had discussed with the other people like what we wanted, and basically. I walked in and, and you know, I, I said he was already the biggest DJ in Vegas at that point. He had been doing um, hard rock right yeah. prior to that, right? Mm -hmm. So he was the by far, and he was also dating Nicole Richie. Mm -hmm. So he was in the People magazine every week. I mean, he was like on, t on the news every night on like Entertainment Tonight and stuff like that. Yeah. He was a very big star at that moment. And so we walked into the room and I said to Stevie D, hey, look, man, like if there's who would be the biggest possible DJ? I could help get for you right now. And he's like, AM? And I was like, yes. There is an opportunity at the right price that he will jump ship. And he's like, what's that price? And I, I, I told you I play poker, so I put my poker face on. <laughs> and I, I wrote, it's like one of those old school movies. I wrote it on a piece of paper. You slid it to him. I slid it to him. I didn't even want to <laughs> utter the words because I, I knew if I said it, like my voice would crack or something. You know, I didn't want to like say the word. Mm -hmm. And I, I can be honest, a piece of paper said, Twenty thousand dollars for a night per night. It's a 20 twenty twenty k or something, right? Uh huh. And he goes and he looks at it and he goes, "I can do this." And he wrote back and he said like eighteen thousand five hundred. And I was like, and I was like, "This is it." I remember all the books I've read about negotiation. If you don't do it now, you're never gonna like claw it back. So I wrote back nineteen thousand five hundred, and he said, "Okay." So basically, <laughs> after that happened. You know, the news got out, yeah. and not by me, but, you know, AM and his people, not a, somebody in his camp started blabbing about it. And we, so all, everybody, we all heard about it. Everybody we all heard about, about, about it. Knew about yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone found out, and, like, it raised the bar up here. Exactly. So now it's like, okay, 50 nights, a, you know, every weekend, once a week, 50 times a year, 20K a night, that's a million dollars. So that's why that, that whole thing started of the million dollars was, was from that moment, basically. And then, and... So okay. you're the reason why we get cheese now. <laughs> I well, appreciate it, Shay. Well, he's the reason why we got cheese, and then when AM passed, we kind it, it kind of fell through a little bit.